Chopper. Oh, Chopper. Oh. Here we go again. The Adventures of Chopper, starring Roland Young. <laughs> Adventures of Chopper is a new comedy series based on Thorn Smith's hilarious bestseller and is brought to you by the makers of those bubbly light crisper cornflakes, Post Toasty. We toast them quick, we toast them light, you can tell by the taste we toast them. They're a tasty treat, so good to eat, delicious and light for toasting. And you know what? We like them. <laughs> Now, let's meet Topper. How do you do? My name is Cosmo Topper. Looking at me, you wouldn't think I was suffering one of the oldest diseases known to man. Blotting trouble. When I say she's out of this world, I mean it. She's a ghost. This blonde ghost I'm referring to is Marion Kirby, who with her equally frivolous husband, George, has really been complicating my life. With them around, my simplest problems always wind up as disasters. For example, the other day, we had some trouble with our telephone. Mr. Topper. Mr. Topper, I'm handing in my number here and now. I hear you, Topper. What's the matter? If I telephone Mr. Topper, it's on the bleach. Oh, the telephone. Oh, yeah, it's a bit out of order, but you wouldn't leave us over a little thing like that, would you? Little thing? Mr. Topper, I've got my social life to consider. That telephone means the difference between being in bed at nine or something at the Savoy. Oh. Come on, the phone isn't that bad. There's just a slight buzzing. And it don't ring the way it should, and the voices ain't clear. Well, in any event, I've already called the telephone repairman. Well, I hope he finds the trouble and quit. Certainly he should. Probably only the wires are crossed in the trees. Maybe the lightning the other night did it, or it could be the squirrels. Trees full of them. Well, that repairman better get here soon. No squirrels ain't gonna take me out, damn silly. Hmm. Imagine he just up wanting to quit because the phone's not working well. Cosmo? Cosmo, who were you talking to just then? Oh, well, hello, Marvina. Um, nobody. Why? Well, every time I come upon you suddenly, you seem to be talking to someone, and there's no one there. Cosmo, do you feel well? Oh, sure. Yeah. And another thing. Every night lately, I hear you talking in your sleep. Well, maybe you don't give me enough chance to talk when I'm awake. You know? <laughs> Cosmo, dear, please don't joke. I'm really worried about you. And lately, you've been acting so queerly as if, well, as if you were hearing voices or something. Voices? Why? Why, that's ridiculous, Melvina. There's really nothing to worry about. Maybe I haven't been sweet enough to you. After all, a wife should be your husband's partner. He carries happiness and his trouble. Oh, I'd like to share your troubles with you, Cosmo. Why, Melvina, that, that's the nicest thing you've said to me since you, since you proposed to me. <laughs> well then, Cosmo, why don't you confide in me and tell me what's bothering you? After all, there's no one more understanding than your own wife. Melvina, maybe you're right. But, Melvina, you will believe what I tell you, no matter how fantastic it sounds. Of course, dear. Trust me. Now, what is it? Well, you remember George and Marion Kirby? Of course, that reckless young couple who died when their car crashed into a tree. Melvina, they're not really dead. Not dead? The Cosmo, they're buried at Pleasantville Cemetery. Yes, but they've come back to Earth as low plain spirits. They come back to Earth as low plane spirits. Yes, you see, they couldn't get to heaven, so they have to hang around the Earth. <laughs> With you, Cosmo? Oh, yes, they made me their bosom companion. They made you their bosom companion? Unfortunately, yes. You do believe me, don't you, Melvina? Why, oh, why yes, dear, of course. <laughs> and and uh, these, these low plane spirits, uh, do you really see them, Cosmo? Actually, I only see them when they have stored up enough ectoplasm. When then they materialize right before my eyes, out of thin air. Out of, out of thin air? Mm-hmm. Zip, they materialize. Zip, they dematerialize. They materialize and dematerialize? Zip, zip? It's <laughs> about it, yes. So the times Marion looks a little unzipped. 
Anyway, they're the ones who've been aggravating me lately. Oh, so they're the ones. So, one time George and Marion forced your uncle out of the house, the next they dragged me to the races. And you blame everything on these low plain spirits? Completely. So now, dear, after hearing my story, you can understand my trouble. Yes, Cosmo, I... Uh, I'm just beginning to understand. See how serious it is. Cosmo, it's more serious than you think. You can see why I've been worried. Can I? Uh, now, Cosmo, dear, you stay right here. Uh, I'll be right back. Uh, now, don't go away. I won't, Melvina. Now that I've told you everything, I think we know how to handle it. Uh, yes, dear. I think I know just how to handle it. <laughs> I know, Dr. Schwarzkopf, that uh, the phone is a little out of order. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, I say he hears noises. He sees things. He talks to himself. You'll take the case? Oh, thank you. Yes, our family doctor said you were the best psychiatrist around here. Oh, I'll be sure not to tell him that you're coming. Yes, yes, I understand. You want to observe him without arousing any mental resistance. Oh, oh, yeah, you come at once? Of course. Yes, of course. Oh, I'll be sure to keep him here until you arrive. Goodbye. I'm beginning to feel better already. Confession is good for the soul. I should tell Melvina everything long ago. No more George and Marion for me. Ah, uh, I spoke too soon. George, Marion, you in this room? You mean think I can't tell just because you're invisible? Oh, speak up, I tell you. Yes, they really are here. My nerves must be getting the better of me. Don't mess up my hair. Marion, I knew you were here. Now, no more of your silly friends. Speak up. I'm no longer a man to be trifled with. <laughs> oh, I talk to you. Darling, you're so cute when you're caught. Don't you know these other ladies? I just sneak in on people just because you're a silly. Now, don't be an old cross pack, talk to you. But you need some fun. Darling, George and I have a great day planned for you. He ought to be along any minute. Mary, I want you to get this off my chest at once. I'm a new man. I'm taking a new lease on life. That's an idea. Lately, you've been looking as if your old one had expired. Then, I mean, I'm not waiting for George to pick me up. I'm not interested in your plans for me today or ever. In fact, I'm leaving you from now to walk, take a walk by myself. Why, Copper, do you think I'll let you go on that note? Don't you going to stop me? Marion, take your arms away from my neck. Marion, get off my lap this instant. Copper's <laughs> getting angry. Stop you getting angry. Mary, I have Mary, I have you to sit here. Even if you are invisible, what if my wife should come in? Cosmo, I am in. Oh, Cosmo, you're talking to yourself again. Oh, my poor dear, so burdened down with care. That's not the only thing I'm burdened down with. The best thing for me now would be if I could stretch my legs and take a short walk outside. A walk? Oh, no, Cosmo, you mustn't. Why not? Uh, well, uh, 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 someone is coming. Uh, I mean, uh, when you look so comfortable in that chair. Oh, Cosmo, remember when we were first married, you always asked me to sit on your knee. <laughs> well, why don't you ask me to sit there now? <laughs> right now, Melvina? Yes, of course. Ask me right now. Well, I can't sit in any room. What? I mean, I never had much of a lap in the first place. My legs are so short. <laughs> Cosmo, what are you saying? <laughs> oh, now, dear, I am serious. After all, life is small, a lap's a lap. <laughs> well, if you insist, let me make a suggestion. Well, what is it? Why don't you let me sit on your lap? Give you a job. Is that the telephone repair man? Send him right in. Yes, sir, Mr. Carpenter. I'll be in the living room. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Good afternoon. Dr. Herman Schwartz talks to see Mr. Topper. Here's my card. Mr. Topper's in the living room. You needn't announce me. Do I? <laughs> I wasn't going in. That door over there. Well, Mr. 
Uh, Mr. Topper, you're right. Well, it's about time you got here. Uh, you were expecting me? Expecting? I've been expecting you for days. Don't stand there. Go climb the tree. Climb, <laughs> climb the tree? Now, now, Mr. Topper, let's sit down calmly and discuss this. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? Well, it's my opinion the trouble's been caused either by the lightning or the squirrels. Personally, I lean towards the squirrels. Uh, why is that? I think they've been crossing my wires. Mm -hmm. In other words, you definitely feel your wires are crossed. Either that or I have a very loose connection. <laughs> well, uh... In any event, you hold the little squirrels directly responsible for your present predicament? Undoubtedly. Tell me, uh, have you ever seen these little squirrels at work? Not exactly. Mm hmm? But confidentially, I think they sneak around and work on my wires when I'm asleep. <laughs> mm. Definite manifestations of a persecution complex. Was there? <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. Now, look here, my man. I don't see where all this talk is getting us. Why don't you get your tools and get busy? Tools? <laughs> Certainly a hammer and monkey wrench. For the squirrels, Mr. Papa? Of course not. Stop gibbering like an idiot. Well, then what for? Well, you know your business better than I do. I'm probably going to screw loose someday. <laughs> that we can agree upon. Now, uh, where were you first aware that something was wrong? Well, a few days ago, there was a distinct buzzing noise. It hurt my ear. Buzzing noise in your ears? Like a bee, perhaps? Not exactly. Certainly not like a squirrel, Mr. Topper. What has that to do with The trouble is, when I hear the buzzing, I can't hear the voices. Voices? You hear voices, sir. Oh, yes, the buzzing isn't as bad as that. I can still hear the voices. Mm hmm? And uh, what do these voices seem to be saying? What difference does that make? Oh, just call it idle curiosity, Mr. Topper. Is there anything that all the voices have to say in common? Certainly. Hello and goodbye. <laughs> Let's get to the trouble. Now, now, Mr. Topper, please calm yourself. Why, the last gentleman I dealt with not only had trouble with bells and buzzing, but he also saw lights going on and off. Is that right? Yes, he thought he was a pinball machine. <laughs> well, poor fellow must have been out of his mind. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Wartime hysteria, no doubt. I deeply sympathize with these people. Oh, you do? Oh, yes, sir. Poor unbalanced souls are my deepest sympathy. Well, shall we climb the tree now? Are uh, you all through now, Mr. Telephone Man? Not all through, sister, but I found out what the trouble was. Now tell me where I can find the boss of the house and I'll make my report. Mrs. Topper's in the dining room. Oh, just to come now. Uh, Mrs. Topper's a man to see you. Oh, yes. Thank you, here it's all. Well, Doctor, have you made your examination? Lady, <laughs> the name is Smith. Just plain Smith. Oh, yes, how forgetful of me. <laughs> I promise you I wouldn't mention your name, didn't I, Doctor? <laughs> Well, uh, what did you find, uh, Mr. Smith? Lady, will you stop winking at me? I got a wife and three kids. <laughs> but tell me, what did you find? Well, you know, everything's got a breaking point, Mrs. Topper. Oh, it isn't that bad. Well, I made a thorough examination. You got a heck of a mess on your hands here. <laughs> the wires are definitely crossed. Oh, dear, I was afraid of something like this. What do you think it caused it? Well, I'd say it was mainly due to the squirrels. Oh, poor dear Cosmo. But tell me, do you think I could discuss this with my husband? Sure, by all means. Tell him the truth. Oh, very well, Doctor. Uh, it's going to be hard, but I know I must be brave. <laughs> So you see, Cosmo, in view of all the evidence, it's, it's obvious you're not quite well. After all, the psychiatrist's examination this afternoon was, was very conclusive. You say a psychiatrist examined me and I didn't even know it? Yes, dear. And not only did I talk with him later, but I received his written report. Well, you know, I still quite, can't quite believe it. Well, Cosmo, did anyone else ever see these ghosts? Well, no, they didn't. Uh, did anyone else ever talk to them? It would be tough to prove. 
You see, Cosmo, that all these things are figments of your imagination. Then I don't have wild evenings with dead people. Imagination, dear. Well, I didn't go to the race at last week with George and Marion Kirby and win a lot of money. Imagination, dear. And Marion Kirby doesn't think I'm attractive and throw her arms around me. Imagination, darling. <laughs> yeah, what has my imagination got that I haven't got? Supposing you're right, what are we going to do about it? Well, uh, people who aren't well... Uh, uh, well, they stop work for a while, and they go away for a rest. To a sanitarium. To a sanitarium? Yes, dear. It's so quiet and private. Oh, there'll be no one there to disturb you. As long as you have advantages, I can use a good rest. But you haven't quite convinced me about the sanitarium. Well, of course, dear. I won't be with you. You've convinced me. <laughs> I knew you'd be reasonable, dear. Now, Cosmo, uh, the first step on your road to recovery is to face squarely the fact that you are not well. But what if I hear the voices again or see the ghost? Well, if you do, dear, you must ignore it. You just say to yourself, I'm a sick man. I'm imagining things. I want to get well. Go ahead. Practice. Very well, dear. I'm a sick man. I'm imagining things. I want to get well. <laughs> I'm a sick man. I'm imagining things. I want to get well. I talk to you. You're still angry. I'm sorry I was gone so long, darling, but I had the hardest time finding you. Hi, Papa. Hey, what's all this mumbo-jumbo? Oh, boy, we got plans for you. <laughs> we're going to have a wonderful time. Well, we're going to... Papa, are you listening to me? I'm a sick man. I'm imagining things. I want to get well. Well, what did you say, Papa? What did you say, George? That's me, Daddy. Hey, Papa. Papa, you're ignoring us. George, maybe he's asleep. Take him out of his slumber. Yeah. Papa. Papa, don't you hear us? No, I don't hear you, but if I did, I would tell you I've been pronounced crazy. Because I imagine I see and hear ghosts. You do? Anyone we know? Yes, you and George. Oh, come on, come on, come off it, Papa. You don't imagine you see us. We're visible now. You do see us. No, I don't. You're merely hallucinations. Go away. Oh, now, look, look, Papa. If we're just hallucinations, why are you talking to us? Because I'm crazy. <laughs> Topsy, darling, how do you know you're crazy? Because I'm talking to you. Oh, Papa, don't believe stuff like that. Look, if you're in a jam, let us help you out. No, you was the famous psychiatrist that I was not well. They were sending me to a sanitarium. But this is fantastic, Topper. How can you say that we don't exist when we're standing right here talking? Oh, uh, George, let me handle this. Your turn, baby. Topsy, dear, look in my eyes. Now I put my arms around you, and then I kiss you. Now what have you got to say? I'm a sick man. <laughs> I'm imagining things. Who wants to get well? <laughs> Remember, Papa, you can't live on love. But who wants to when you can enjoy heaping bowlfuls of golden brown post toasties? Now, there's a dish that'll turn a man's head any time, especially when you eat ripe, fresh fruit on those toasty brown cornflakes. Post toasties alone have a grand, sunny flavor that's plenty hard to beat. It just hints of golden summer corn, and every crunchy flake stays bubbly light, even in milk to the last mouth-watering spoonful. That's one reason post toasties are an American favorite breakfast cereal. What's more, post toasties have a plus value when it comes to nourishment. They are rich in food energy and supply important food values of the whole grain. That fact alone makes post toasties a truly fine pickup any time of the day. So, for love at first bite, have some golden brown post toasties. You'll like them. Now, let's go back and see if Papa is getting his wires straightened out. <laughs> Poor old Topsy. George is a terrible mess. And frankly, you're mainly to blame. You're always getting him into trouble. Me? Oh, you usually manage to get your pretty pan into the middle of things, don't you? Why, George Kirby, you're the lowest low playing spirit I know. How can you make an accusation like that? Well, all right, all right. What's the use of arguing? The point is that if Topper's declared crazy, they're going to send him away. Now, just what are we going to do about it? Well, whatever we're going to do, we better do it fast. Right. George, I overheard Mrs. Topper talking on the telephone a few minutes ago, and I thought the Schwartz cop was bringing over a note of Viennese psychiatrist Dr. Gerhard Gillingham Glockenspiel to examine Topper before they officially commit him. Another psychiatrist? 
Oh, what is he doing? Getting up a convention over top of his mind? I've decided when they get here, Topper won't be the only one under observation. We'll be in the room, invisible. And I have a plan. After you, Dr. Glockenstiel. The patient is in the living room. You'll find this a very interesting case. Oh, from what you tell me, Dr. Schwartzkopf, this case has delightful possibilities. <laughs> I know you'll enjoy yourself. Well, on to the patient, Dr. Schwarzkopf. Right. Here we go, Dr. Glockenstiel. Dr. Schwarzkopf, here we go. Well, well, well. How's our patient this afternoon? Uh, Mr. Topper, I want to present my colleague, Dr. Gerhard Wilhelm Glockenstiel. He wishes to ask you a few questions. Oh, please, no more questions. I'm not well in that fast. Uh, one moment, please. Let's not jump to any hasty conclusion. Please, I'm happier this way. Don't try to convince me that I'm sane. That's what they were trying to do. Who are they? George and Marion. A couple of dead people I've been going around with lately. Oh. <laughs> you see, Dr. Glockenstiel, not only does he have buzzing, ringing, and voices, but now he's got dead people, too. A wonderful mind to think of this. <laughs> of course, now I realize they're hallucinations. George, I don't mind leaving, but Marion... Oh, there's a hallucination. I hate to give up. Oh, Mr. Stopper, would you mind describing this apparition you see? Well, usually Marion is invisible, but when she materializes... Oh. Yes, continue, Mrs. Hopper. When she materialized, she's about five feet two, blonde hair, blue eyes. Yes, yes. Lovely little figure. Go on. Sometimes I'll be sitting in my chair and she comes up, puts her arms around me and kisses me on the cheek. Uh, Dr. Glockenstiel, sometimes I think we're on the wrong end of this business. Dr. Please, Dr. Schwarzkopf, let's not mix business with hallucinations. Still, I want to know. A hallucination in Vienna. Oh, that's the best law I've done in You know, the apparitions I can understand, but I've had other hallucinations I can't explain. Oh, that's what we are here for, Mr. Topper. Tell us all about these hallucinations. Well, I'll be sitting quietly, minding my own business, and suddenly, for no apparent reason, the door will open and close. All by itself. Like that. I just imagined it open and close. Oh, now, now, Mr. Stoffer, calm yourself. I still saw the door open and close. Uh, Dr. Schwarzkopf, you saw the door open and close, didn't you? Yes, of course, Dr. Glockenfeld. Uh, probably a draft. Well, you see, Mr. Stoffer, you must be confused. Your hallucination is reality. The door open and close. Well, perhaps it was a draft, but I have other hallucinations not so easily explained. Oh, I think Dr. Schwarzkopf and I can explain. Them. You can? That's wonderful. You take that trumpet. How did that trumpet get here? I thought it was in the attic. Oh, dear gentlemen, right now I see that trumpet. I imagine I see it playing all by itself. I don't suppose you hear it, do you? Mr. Topper, would you repeat that question? I said, Dr. Glockenstiel, did you hear the trumpet? The question is, do I hear the trumpet? Well, Dr. Schwarzkopf, do you hear it? You tell me. Oh, no, no, after you. But I insist. Oh, you, Dr. Glockenstiel. Well, that's the question, Mr. Gorner, because they're saying I hear nothing. I, too, hear nothing. It's stopped now. Oh, thank heaven. Amen. You see, you heard nothing. Well, that proves I'm not well. Anyone who hears these noises is obviously not well. Yes, you may as well go, gentlemen. Excuse me, but I'm having the queerest hallucination now. The picture just came off the wall and is floating through the air. Floating, floating in the direction of Dr. Glockenfield's head. Oh! Gentlemen, I... I hate to bother you again, but I'm having another hallucination. Another one, Mr. Topper? Mm-hmm. Yes, I imagine that heavy chair is rising and floating through the air toward Dr. Glockenfield's head. It's floating. But now it's just about to join the picture frame. <laughs> you don't see it. <laughs> you don't see it. Oh, oh, I don't see a thing. No, I insist. I don't see a thing. But I've got to remember. I have another appointment. Good day, Mr. Topper. Oh, dear. You know what, Dr. Schwarzkopf? What? Now the chair seems to be going in the direction of your head. Clock and fail, wait for me. Oh, Mr. Topper, we'll send you our bill in the morning. George, Marion. <laughs> well, Topper, you finally convinced that we're not hallucinations, huh? George, don't talk to him. After the insult that he's paid us, I don't want to have anything more to do with him. Hmm. 
That goes for me, too, Topper. As far as you're concerned, we're quick. Oh, now, Marion. Let's go, George. George. Marion. They're gone for good. No more excitement, no more fun. Oh, dear, I'm going to miss them. Now what? Uh, Mr. Topper, your wife sent me in here to make my examination. Your examination? Oh, no, you don't. I just had two examinations already. You don't understand. I just came to fix them. I don't care what you came to fix. I had enough, take enough abuse from you psychiatrists today. What's the matter with you, buddy? Are you nuts? Nuts? <laughs> Crazy, am I? Well, that's the last call. <laughs> Poor old Topper. Looks like he's out for the camp. You know, a lot of people have been feeling that way lately, what with the hot weather and all. That's why I think you'd particularly enjoy Golden Brown Post Toasties, covered with fresh fruit and swimming in milk. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, it truly is. You see, with Post Toasties, you enjoy delicate toasted flakes that are packed with grand, sunny flavor. And you're going to find that each delicious spoonful is bubbly, light, and crunchy right to the last tempting bite. So for real refreshment, neighbors... Buy Golden Brown Post Toasties. Serve them often. You'll like them. We toast them fresh, we toast them light. You can tell by the taste we toast them. They're a tasty treat, so good to eat. Delicious and light from toast them. Oh, toast them. And you know what? We like them. Cosmo, did you read what happened to those two psychiatrists in this morning's paper? Yes, they each committed the other to an institution. And to think, and to think I believe you were crazy. You don't see those ghosts anymore, do you, Cosmo? No, they left me for good, don't they? Oh, so glad. And to make everything perfect, the telephone wires are being fixed, so heliotrope, of course, will stay. Let's talk about what you think. The heliotrope, what's the matter? The matter? Two empty straight jackets chase the telephone man up the tree and won't let him down. <laughs> oh, dear. Here we go again. May I have iced coffee? Friends, that's a frequently asked question. All the hot summer long. But when the coffee's Maxwell House, the question is more often... May I have another glass of iced coffee? Yes, Maxwell House sends the flavor test of fine coffee. The test of icing. Refreshingly iced or appetizingly hot. Maxwell House is always rich and mellow. No wonder more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand in the world. It's dependably good to the last drop. <laughs> Sure to listen to Papa starring Roland Young next Thursday when Mrs. Papa intercepts a present meant for Marion. Remember, Papa next Thursday, same time, same station. This is Richard Calmer saying good night for the makers of those bubbly light crisper cornflakes, Post Posty. <laughs> This program has come to you from our Radio City studios in New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.